is the truth She will ignite your passion and bring your purpose to life mm. The strategy she shares will take you to higher heights Improving your energy, spirituality, your well-being A better mindset for your journey to build a better you Simply Central Show. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Simply Central Show. We are coming to you from a special location today and super excited about cooking with purpose. So as we get started with today's show, I want to make sure that I always thank our partners. All of the folks that make the Simply Central Show possible, we are super excited to have you on board and we thank you for all you do. So let me share a little bit of a personal thing with you. Everyone that knows me knows how important fitness and eating healthy is to me. I think it's important for you to put the right things in your body and then of course treat your body well with activity, especially with all the hustle and bustle. Your health is important. You have to make sure you make it number one. So today's Cooking with Purpose show is going to feature our master chef, Zach Cara, and he's gonna come to us and share a little bit about what he does to cook healthy and cook with purpose. And not to mention the healthy aspect of his life, because he has a lot of things going on, so we're gonna share that with you. And I would also encourage you at this point to like, share, follow, at Simply Central on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and check us out on YouTube, as well as the simplycentral.com website. So let's go ahead and introduce our guest, Mr. Zach Cara. He is an actor, a master chef. He is also a tennis pro. How crazy is that? And I would say a creator of purpose with his gifts in cooking and all that he does. So welcome, Zach, to the show. We are so excited to have you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Did I talk you up too much? <laughs> well, we are going to have an amazing show today. So. I have already shared with the audience, yeah. you are a chef. Yeah, I am. And a young chef at that. That's true. <laughs> so all the folks that know me, I do my best to stay out yeah. of the kitchen because <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that domestic activities need to be done in like, you know, yeah, every day. Let's just, let's just, just say yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. I want to eat though. I definitely want to eat. Everyone's got to eat, right? Everyone's got to eat. So you're 15 yeah. and you've been cooking since you were... Uh, since I was 11. 11? Yeah. That's not me. That's not <laughs> me. So, I know my family is probably looking at this right now saying, really? 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 Yeah, like, come on. So, tell everyone about Zach. What yeah. got you into cooking? So, ironically, I never even used to like to cook at all. In fact, I used to hate cooking. I used to hate watching cooking shows. So it was never like my, my sort of thing. Yeah. But then m my sister downloaded MasterChef Junior on her iPad and then we started watching it really? in a store because I was really bored. And then next thing you know, I kind of I kind of like just fell in, in, into cooking. And hmm. um, so I got my mom t t to start teaching me how to cook. And then eventually um, I enrolled myself in an online cooking school and taught myself how to cook. What? Online cooking school? Yeah. What online cooking school? Yeah, so they have like online culinary schools for people that I guess don't want to go through like the whole process of yeah. actually going through a, a cooking school. So um, my mom just signed me up and I just started doing it. And since I'm homeschooled, she actually put it as part of my schoolwork. So I had even more in, in incentive to do it basically. So you can actually learn how to cook at home? Yeah. Because they had Online. like, yeah, yeah, because they had like, um, there was like tests and like questions and like a lot of videos showing you how to do it. And then there was this one time where it's like, okay, so today's lesson is to break down a chicken. And then I had to tell my mom to go to the grocery store and buy me a chicken. And she's like, what the hell? <laughs> right. She's like, why do you need a chicken? Yeah. Homework. Then, it's called homework. It's like homework, mom. <laughs> and, then, and then I started like breaking it down and then she was just like, what the hell, basically. <laughs> That's pretty cool. How long did you do that? Um, 
I did that. I did the cooking school for about a year. I actually never even really finished it. So I, I, have, I have to keep going on it, but um, it taught me so much. Yeah. And I have to go back because I, I, want, I want to keep learning more. Yeah. I absolutely love that. I mean, so online school, not just for, well, there's a number of folks out there that are becoming something by online school. Mm -hmm. So you can become a chef online. I'm not going to be doing that. <laughs> I'm just saying you can become a chef online and learn at least how to become a better cook. For those people out there who don't know how to cook, I actually know how to cook. I just don't prefer <laughs> to do don't it. prefer to. Right. Yeah. Now, what I do like is, you know how you get into the kitchen mm -hmm. and let's say you you haven't made groceries yeah. i made groceries bought groceries you have not gone to the store in yeah. a while and you have just a few things that are in the cabinet right yeah. i used to like google some recipes and yeah. say okay look i have some ginger you know i might have a little beef tenderloin i have you know i have like five or six things in the fridge right now yeah. what can i make and I really would like to not have to do that. Like, so when it comes to creating recipes, yeah. like you can look in your, probably you can look in your refrigerator sure. right now and you can pull some things out. Like, how There's did that happen? How did that happen um, for you? Honestly, for me, the way I kind of learned to do that is just a lot of experience and time. Yeah. Um, even though I've only been cooking for about like three or four years now, yeah. I spent a lot of time inside the, in the kitchen, especially after MasterChef. My goal was to make my own, was to make my own cookbook. So, yeah. um, I was just spending a lot of time in the kitchen, just like hours, like creating recipes, writing them, testing them, taking photos, and just um, just a lot of learning and yeah. a lot of, 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 of uh, information. And I enjoy every bit of it because each time I'm, I'm learning something new. Uh, yeah. Or there's always, because the thing that I say this a lot, but in the kitchen there's a million different, there's literally a million different things you can do with a piece of chicken and vegetables and sauces and spices, right? Right. So, I mean, just I think I only know how to eat chicken a couple of ways. <laughs> Baked, grilled. <laughs> that's a few actually. So, uh, yeah, no, that's that's pretty cool because I always look at, okay, what herbs go together? Yeah. What's this? And you're right. It takes preparation. Yeah. It takes planning. It takes research. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people think, hey, you, you need to go to some massive institution. You know, there's a lot of culinary schools out yeah. there. You're proving to them, you want to learn something new? Google it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, honestly, it doesn't, even though I learned a lot of the fundamentals, mm -hmm. I feel like the culinary school taught me a lot of fundamentals, but from like growing as a person or growing as a chef yeah. and learning your own style, that's not what culinary school t teaches you. It yeah. just teaches you the fundamentals to do what like you can do. Because yeah. the, the kitchen's wide open. Because once you learn how to chop properly, how to sear chicken breast, then yeah. you can do... You can kind of put anything you want together. Okay. Well, I like that because, you know, putting things together is a part of creation, yeah, right? For sure. Your intent to cook mm -hmm. is creating your purpose. Yeah. That's really what it is. So you've done that and not out of something that you felt was, you know, what you were born to do. That's yeah. a lot of people <laughs> think purpose is something you have from the time that you Trouble, were young. Yeah. yeah. And and it doesn't have to be that. Or you, it's like I was born to do this. Yeah, yeah, I was and you know it from the I was supposed to be a lawyer. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm I'm just saying. We're right here. We're yeah. not talking about law. So I think that it's important for people to realize how creative they are and that they can do a number of things. For sure. Right now we're on location in Austin, Texas. <laughs> And you were here because you're also a tennis pro. Yeah. So tell me about your week in tennis and how you incorporate your food mm -hmm. and fitness. So um, obviously when I play tennis, I burn a lot of calories. Yeah. So it's very hard for me to, to gain weight just in general. I'm a pretty skinny person. So I probably burn like at least a thousand calories if I play oh, wow. like 600 to almost a thousand calories if I play a lot of tennis and then I work out so food is always something that um, I really have to take seriously especially since I am skinny and I have to put on like proper like yeah. like muscle or weight so I have to so my mom she's the one that's been cooking a lot for me and um, I have to eat I mean I try to eat like a couple thousand calories a day when I'm not traveling, basically, which is a lot. Yeah. So I'm always eating a lot of meals. I'm always cooking or doing something, trying to add on extra calories. So yeah. food is like very important for me, apart from being a chef and trying to create like really fancy dishes. Yeah, 600 to 1,000 calories. 
tennis? I don't know. <laughs> you might want to pick that up. It's for pretty this. good. It's yeah. Fun, yeah. So how many hours does that take? Like you're practicing, you're in yeah. a game. 600 so, to 1,000 calories is a lot for some folks that are trying yeah. to like really find other activities they can participate in. For sure. Because yeah. I mean, um, usually I try to practice at least two to three hours. It probably ends up being about two hours. I, I used to do what I used to do, which was just insane, was like three hours of practice and a 5K beat run like five <laughs> days a day, or five, sorry, five days a week. Yeah. And now, but then I got like injured, so I like toned it down. So I do like two hours pretty much every day. I do three days on, one day off, and then I okay. do and then I do workouts every other day. Yeah. So I mean, I always have to. I'm always doing something basically. Yeah. I'm always being busy or being active. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool because you, you've you now got a plan for that. Yeah. And you do have to plan for it. You know, a lot of folks think, okay, fitness, I don't want to go to the gym. For sure. Uh, you know, it. how am I going to have the time for it? And where does it start? You're starting at a young age with a number of things. And it does start there. You do yeah. really have to put it in your mind and then put it in your schedule mm -hmm. and make it happen. Yeah. And then you, you start to see that it becomes a... Yeah. A lifetime uh, experience so we are going to take a quick break here because there are some amazing things that we're gonna be doing in this show For sure. and when we come back we're gonna talk about some of your favorite recipes and some of the other things that you're doing as well as we have a cooking segment a little bit later in the show so we'll be right back Parkway Mazda is where customer satisfaction is just not a slogan, it's our culture. I love coming here. It's like coming home. I feel like these people are my family. Which is very appropriate because that's how it is around here. It feels like family. Okay, uh, I came to Parkway because my car was flooded in Hurricane Harvey. And they picked out a car, or we picked out a car, and it was in the right price. It was real easy. They pulled it around the front. I bought it. It was easy. They made me feel just like family. Once a customer, you become family. The people here at Parkway Family Mazda really do make you feel like family. Every experience has been a pleasant one. From the purchase, to the repair, to the finance. Come on and join the family at Parkway Family Mazda. At Parkway, we are deeply concerned for all who are affected by the recent flood. For a very limited time, take advantage of five months, no payments, on new 2017 Mazdas, $1,000 rebate and $750 flood assistance, and 0% ARP financing for 60 months. Welcome back to the Simply Central Show. We are here with Zach Cara, and we are talking about cooking with purpose. Yep. And so when we left from the break, we were going to get into some of the recipes and things that you like, and some of those guilty pleasures, because... I like to eat healthy. Yeah. I think me it's too. important to at least do 80% good and 20% whatever. It's just got to be a little balanced like 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 with my like with my with my meals I like to have a nice glass of like soda or like pop or something. So I mean everyone everyone's got that one little guilty pleasure that they love. Right? Pop? Did For you sure. call it pop? Pop? Where are you it's, from? It's it's a Canada thing. It's a Canada, it's a Canada thing. thing. Okay, pop. all right. I always, I always get confused with that and like one other thing. It's like pop or like soda. Yeah. It's like I always do that. Or a cold drink, you know, just in case. Pop, soda, cold pop, drink. Soda, soda, soda. Yeah. A cold drink normally means a Coke, you know, yeah. you know, a something Coke, like yeah. that. So, all right. So, yeah, I, I like and I love my sweets. Like, For sure. Yeah. I, I love my cookies and when I get to my workouts and I had my chocolate chip cookie or something like that or... Ugh, it's like, why did I do it? Why did I, why <laughs> it's did like, I do I it? I regret that. Yeah, exactly. Because the workout truly is, it's that much harder yeah. because of the sugars and stuff that you put in yeah, there. Yeah, but, and you also got that on your conscience while you're working out, right? Is that what it is? It's a probably a mental it's thing. Like maybe I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. You just want to just I probably keep going for been. another 20 minutes. Don't think about the cookie when you're working out. Don't think about it. Just the workout will go easier. Just, just let it go. Just let it just, slide. Just let it slide. So what are some of your guilty pleasures? Um, well, when it comes to for breakfast time, probably my French toast is definitely one of my guilty pleasures, along with pancakes. Pancakes. Yeah. Mm. That sounds delicious. It's really, too. it's really good. Yeah. But then um, my whole family, like, they love to just snack on like chocolate sometimes. Mm. Just like as one of like once a week or so, they'll just like snack on chocolate. I'm I'm not that type of person. I'm more of like a chocolate chip cookie, like the really yeah. soft ones. Yes. Or, like maybe a nice big bowl of chocolate cereal. 
Chocolate cereal? Yeah, like Cocoa Puffs. Okay, right. I remember those. Those are good. <laughs> I, I, I've been eating them all week, actually. Really? Yeah. That's a lot of sugar. Yeah, and actually, now that I think about it. <laughs> okay. So, well, yeah, I'm right there with you with the chocolate chip cookies. Yeah. That's my thing. Heat it up a little bit. You got it all moist and gooey with that really? chocolate. Really? I just... like it cold. I really? like it cold and soft. Oh, no. I have to have that chocolate just like, you know, it's got to be I don't like drizzling. it like that. It That's tastes too warm. It's so too good. Sweet. With a little bit of milk? Well, that was back Milk. Then. Yeah. yeah you, you, no, there's not a chocolate chip cookie without a glass of milk. Yeah. Cold milk. Yeah. Cold milk. And I actually make my own milks. I'm not really talking really? about them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Wow. That's another show, another time. <laughs> See, he didn't know. <laughs> didn't know I've that. got skills. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. Okay, so yeah, chocolate chip cookies and Cocoa Puffs. Yeah. And French toast. And cake. Wow, I'm really on cake person. <laughs> Well, no, because you do have some some healthy favorites, right? Yeah. Like, uh, I think I saw roasted cauliflower, which is oh, I, I love that. Yeah, it's just I just I can literally like like whenever I make it, I'm like you know I'll just have a little bit. I just end up like snacking on it. It's so good. Yeah, it is, and it's got that nice little. Cr I love crunchy things. Yeah, it's got a nice crunch to it. And it's like nice and soft because what I do is I coat it with butter lemon juice, salt and pepper, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So it tastes like really, but it tastes like very buttery and a little salty mm -hmm. and you get a little bit of lemon juice. Mm -hmm. It's so good, it's to die for. I could literally eat a whole tray of it. I think he just dropped the recipe for I you. did, I did. Yeah, <laughs> you might want to rewind and catch that. So I mean, that's a nice healthy snack. I think you feed your body with the great nutrients mm -hmm. and it tastes good. Sure. I mean, everything that you just mentioned, with the exception of the butter, I'm, I'm <laughs> not gonna. Why, butter's actually good for you. Well, real butter. Is good butter. No, I, n I never touch margarine or anything like there that. There you go. A proper stick Real of butter. A, pro a proper stick of butter. Then Remember it's actually that. good for you. It's okay. not. It's not bad. There you go. No trans fats. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you have those. You feed your body with some good stuff. Roasted cauliflower. Mm -hmm. Anything else that's um, like your favorite meal to cook? My favorite meal to cook. Um, maybe a nice piece of steak or like mm. or like. Um, some like fried rice with like steak or, or chicken too. I love steak. Yeah. And then in terms of like another healthy snack, I love it when my, when, when, when my mom, she cooks carrots with in like butter and then like salt, pepper, and then like soy sauce. It's mm. so good. Hmm. That's really good too. That's another recipe trap right there. I know, what am I doing? Yeah, <laughs> you're just Mine giving them all of I gave you that recipe. <laughs> That's your mom's recipe. Yeah, that is. Don't give up your mom's secrets. Oops. You said fried rice, my brother mm. makes Shout out, John. <laughs> My brother makes this really great uh, chicken fried rice, mm -hmm. which I don't even know how to make fried rice. We have a wok, <laughs> and I probably could just Google it. Either way it goes. You can Google it, everything these you, days. Pretty much, pretty much. I just like the way that he makes it. So it's pretty tasty. And steak. Steak. Oh, yes. nothing beats a nice steak for me. Nothing. Well, you have a nice piece of steak, a nice lobster tail, lobster a little tail? cauliflower yeah. and broccoli with a nice little cheese sauce on the top. Really, cheese sauce? Yes. Seriously? Yes. For me, just like a nice like onion or like wine sauce with it. Did he and then, go there? And then like potatoes. And potatoes. Potatoes, just like mashed potatoes, like roasted potatoes or like mm. carrots or something. That's not bad. That's what I love. A little. If I'm like eating just for myself or like yeah. for my family, I, I love making that. Huh. Yeah, no. So we have some things in common there. I, yeah, just, ooh. That sounds delicious. Are, are we making that today? We should maybe, maybe that we today. should. <laughs> we should make that today. So, all right. So you're cooking. You're playing tennis. Yeah. You're also homeschooled. So, I mean, you have a very demanding schedule. Busy, yeah. Very productive things going on. What do you do for fun? For fun, um, well, basically, whenever I get a chance, I, I like playing PS4 or like video games with, with my brother. Oh. Yeah. All right. That's so. like. It's like if I'm done my school for for the week and there's nothing else to do, it's like boom, we'll go straight to the to the console. Oh, not the console. There's like nothing. Go right to the PS4 and start playing. <laughs> <laughs> I could literally play for days. Really? Like, Just I, like I would, block I would, away. I would literally play for 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 days. Seriously. Who's winning? Who's winning most of the time when you play? Um, be honest. I met your brother, so unfortunately, he's as much as I would like to admit it, I think my brother is a little bit better. Yeah. But we usually play together on a team, so. What are you playing? Um, well, you, we play like first person shooters, like Call of Duty, and oh, wow. now we stopped playing that. Now we're playing like Rainbow Six Siege and stuff. Oh, yeah, no yeah. sports games, no. I used to play like sports games like FIFA, but I mean like, 
Honestly, I, f I feel like the FIFA games, like, they, like they're doing the same thing over and over again. I want something, mm. like, fresh. Uh, need to give them something fresh. PS4 needs something fresh. Yeah. B4. <laughs> <laughs> so when I think about... Uh, the video consoles. I don't know why I always think about like NBA Live and you know the NFL, the football yeah. games and things like that. Oh, I beat my dad in, in football. <gasps> no, no, dad, no. Okay, so what team do you pick when you're playing those games? Um, usually, um, it depends on the rating. I'll admit I am a bit of a team hopper. Uh oh. When it comes to the ratings, but um, I like uh, I like the Broncos. I like um. What was the team that won? Uh, the one with Cam Newton. I forgot. I'm blanking out. What's what's the team? What's Is the that team? the Seahawks? 49ers. 49ers. No, I love the 49ers too. 49ers are great. And then Carolina. Um, yeah, South Carolina. I like that too. Carolina Panthers. Yeah, Is that Panthers, Cam? Panthers. Yeah, that's Cam. Carolina Panthers. I guessed that. Did you yeah. see that? I'm the one who guessed that. Not me. <laughs> I might need to be on a sports show. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Anyway, back to this. So wait, are you a Carolina Panthers fan? Oh, uh, I mean, I don't watch too much football. Yeah. But like when I do, I I mean, I usually just end up watching like the the um the, like the Super Bowl, like the yeah. last four or five games, and that's yeah. pretty much it. But. Have you been paying attention to the things that are going on with, you know, the kneeling for the national yeah, anthem did, and all yeah. that other stuff? What are your thoughts on that? I mean, as a teenager, it's always good to get the perspective of all different age groups. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on what's going on with Colin Kaepernick and the kneeling and, and what everyone's doing? Mm -hmm. Not the NFL, our president, number 45, mm -hmm. you know, some of the things he's saying, you know, what, what does that say to you as, as a youth? Um, well, I feel like everyone should take a stand in what they believe in, r yeah. regardless of whether it's right or wrong. I mean, I definitely feel like what he, I mean, he's taken a lot of strength and like bravery to do what everyone's doing. Yeah. But in terms of like a political side, I'm not, not really into that stuff. So it's interesting. Yeah. See? Yeah, because when you look at those folks, and, and not that you have to take a political side, because I get yeah. it. It's, to me, it's a, a, it's a human thing. Yeah, for right? sure. So people taking a stand for the things that are not right is definitely yeah. important. That's, I mean, yeah. was, if you should take a stand for like whatever you believe in. That's, that's my kind of perspective. Yeah, absolutely. OK, so. We've talked about all those one, wonderful things. What do you do for fun besides, besides PS4, video games? Um, and you're well, traveling all over, so yeah. I know there's got to be some other things. Um, well, I, I love going like, like mini golf and bowling with my family. Cause, okay. Because my family, we're all like very close and we do a lot of stuff together, like tennis, schoolwork. Yeah. Like, so we're all like very tight. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, apart from that, um, we like just to just sit down as a family and just watch TV or just like and then occasionally we'll go out to the movies mm -hmm. or like go bowling or, or mini golf. Honestly, we, we live a very like not a complicated life. It's I just like very that. it's just just very, just very simple, simple and just a lot of spending and just spending a lot of time with each other. I love that. I'm a big supporter of family. I'm a big family mm -hmm. person, so that's really important. And with all the things that you're doing, that's even more important because yeah. you have uh, you have had the opportunity to be on the MasterChef Junior. Yeah. So how did that come about? So, like I said, that's actually the reason why I started cooking because I was kind of inspired by all those kids. I'm like, wow, how are the, all those kids cooking? Well, yeah. if they can do it, like, what stops me from from, from learning how to cook? And then, I don't honestly, that. before that, I had zero TV experience whatsoever. Yeah. I had never really, I honestly, I didn't even like being in front of the camera. I used to hate it. I am so, so right my, there with you. My, uh, like, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then my sister, she kind of like, my sister and my mom kind of encouraged me to go on the show. Oh. And then we flew to Phoenix for an open call audition with like six, 700 kids. And then oh, wow. I ended up getting on the show. Yeah, and you were a semi-finalist. Yeah. So that's pretty amazing for one, someone who didn't want to cook, which I yeah. absolutely understand. I'm just <laughs> not trying to do it. Someone who's not in front of the camera, which I, Absolutely understand. And then you get there, you actually decide to go for something which I would consider pretty big. Yeah. And then you, out of six, seven hundred kids, it was, it was you really, were semifinalist. Yeah. Every time I think about it, it kind of blows my mind because they had like seven, eight other casting calls in different states too. Mm -hmm. So I mean, there was only like se there was seven hundred kids at that. So there was probably like thousands of kids. That, wow. That auditioned. What do you think was the dish? that got you on the show? 
Um, I mean, there's obviously some things I can't say because I signed like the contract, but um, I didn't, I, I didn't, um, I think it was maybe I now looking back at this, I absolutely hate this dish and I'm embarrassed to say it, but it was paprika skillet chicken with crispy noodles. Oh. And now that I think about that, it sounds like something I would just make at home for just like if I was just tired. Yeah. But now when I think of a dish, I think of something just completely different. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, and that's okay because that's what experience comes Everyone's from. Everyone's got to start somewhere, right? They've got to start yeah. somewhere. And we're going to start today. I think we should probably do like a really guilty pleasure, like some. I think so too. I like that. I think we should do some French toast. French toast sounds great. Mm -hmm. I just had breakfast too, so I'll pile on more French toast in my stomach. So when we get back, we are going to have Zach Carr's secret French toast recipe. So tune in in just a few more moments. We're going to take a break. It's different for everyone that competes. Some people don't like the pressure of competing. I like the adrenaline. I like the whole aspect of competing. Your clock starts now. I just wanted to pick up the medals so everybody can sleep in tomorrow. How's that sound? We are the two-time winners of the burger category in this event and one-time World Food Championship Burger World title holder as well for 2015. My passion for cooking came from watching cooking shows because the couple things that kind of really drove me into it was wondering how like chefs were doing this certain technique. I always wonder, how do you do this or how do you chop so fast? That's what really kind of pushed me overboard into the culinary world. My name is Lindsay Porter. I am the executive chef at Woodwork Restaurant in Edmonton. My name is Levi Biddlecombe, and I'm the executive chef at Pack Rat Louie. My name is Allison Smith. I work at Park Island Restaurant. My chances are still good, even though I've seen how talented they are, and they're very skillful. But I feel I, I know my abilities, I know what I can do, so I feel like I still have a really good chance. I mean, I'd be lying if I didn't tell you I wasn't competitive. <laughs> Oh, they're toast. Who doesn't want to eat this season? Come on. Welcome back to the Simply Central Show. You are here with me and Zach Carr. Yep. We are now in the kitchen. I'm in the kitchen. <laughs> so <laughs> when we left from the break, we were talking about some guilty yeah. pleasures, right? So you can eat 80% good and 20% what we're Enjoy. about to do, yeah. yeah. We're about to do some stuff, so we're gonna have some French yeah. toast. toast. It's my morning favorite. time. Is your favorite? It's my favorite thing in the morning. Oh, all it's I my, know. This is my this is my secret recipe, and the way I discovered this was because when I started to cook, my mom showed me how to make scrambled eggs with vegetables. So every morning mm. for a month, I would wake up and make that. But then it came to a point where my parents got got sick of eating it, and so did I. Right. So then next thing I googled it was French toast, and then I kind of stumbled upon this. Genius recipe. It's a genius. It is recipe. It's like something that everyone's done before, but it's very, it's very secret. Okay. It's delicious. It's a secret. He's letting me in yeah. on the secret. Your secret's safe with me because I won't be cooking it. So <laughs> it's like you besides know today, because I'm never gonna. Do it. I'm never gonna do it. Today I am the sous chef. Yeah. You are the master chef. Thank you. Teach me, <laughs> oh wise one. <laughs> What do we have here? All right, so we're going to be starting with the base of the French toast. Okay. So it's just very simple. It's eggs, milk, cinnamon, vanilla, sugar, and toast. Mmm. All right, so you, you want to try cracking some eggs? What? I'm, I'm spraying this on. You want to try crack, oh. cracking an egg? Okay, you, here, it's try, try cracking it with like one hand. One hand? With one hand, yeah. You mean like, like that? Wait. That was a bad one. Ignore that. That was really bad. But usually I do a lot better. This is why I don't do this stuff. So I'm supposed to, wait. I always like to do it like this. You can do that too, but it's better on the countertop because then that makes, because it's a flatter surface, that, that you're more likely to get the eggshells. See, if you do it like that, it's a flatter surface. I see. And then, boom. Oh, like that? Like that, yeah. 
I hope you guys you caught know. that. Right. <laughs> I hope you, know. you caught that. I'm going to have to keep practicing that. That's, uh, <laughs> that's sophisticated. All right. So we should be good there. <laughs> I'm just gonna rinse up my hand. Real yes, quick. yes. All right. Always keep them clean. And then next, we're just gonna add in some milk. Okay. This is whole milk, by the yep, way. Yeah, whole milk. Just remember that as we're doing this. Now, this is a guilty pleasure. You mm -hmm. can substitute some things, yeah. right? I mean, if you're if you're feeling guilty, but not that guilty, right? You can substitute the sugar for some honey or like coconut sugar. Yes, that's also really good too. Yes. Yeah. I have that honey in my bag swag, so I like <laughs> to keep my honey with me. I don't use sugar often. We're gonna make an exception today. today. Yes, we are. Yeah. So just know that you can. You can tell these recipes kinda, to be a little yeah, bit, a sure. little bit healthy. All right, so next we're gonna do a little bit of vanilla extract. Vanilla, mmm. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Not too much because it's really strong. Gotcha. And then next we're gonna go for some cinnamon. I'm personally not a big fan of cinnamon, but really? I feel like just a little bit in here is, yeah. is good. So. I like cinnamon. I like it in my oatmeal. Mm, in like oatmeal? it in really like my morning concoctions too. Mm -hmm. You know, you can put some. Uh, cinnamon yeah. and apple cider vinegar really? and honey together. Yes, it's really good for your body. I didn't know that. So, That's cool. Yeah. And then lastly, we're gonna put in some sugar. Nope. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not, I'm not going to, I think that's, I think that's good. A little sprinkle, just a little sprinkle. Yep. Oh, did he put more? No, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't do anything. I don't know what you're talking about. Mm, are you whisking that right? Oh, this, is it a technique? Um, oh, usually okay. it's yeah. like you, that, you, but you, I'm just kind of, you know. Just, uh, you, yeah. yeah, I got you. You see that? This is good stuff. And then I'm just going to keep whisking it just like as if I were making scrambled eggs. You can see right now, you can kind of see the whites and in, in the, in yeah. the yellows of it. So all you gotta do is just keep whisking it till that goes away, basically, and then that's okay. when you know you're ready. So whisk until the whites go away. Yeah, the whites, and it, and it looks okay. like one. Because right now, it looks separated. Yeah. Because when you're making scrambled eggs, and if you don't wh whisk it properly, and you try yeah. cooking it, you'll get like whites and, and the yolks oh, sometimes. That's what happens. So I just keep whisking it till it's nicely done. And that's about it. This is professional grade stuff here. <laughs> At 15. So what are some of the things you've learned about cooking? I mean, because yeah. as you've gotten in the, the kitchen, there are certain things you probably go to, yeah. right? Like today we're using grapeseed oil mm -hmm. as opposed to olive, olive oil. oil. Yeah, the yeah. reason why I don't use olive oil is because of the high smoke point. Mm -hmm. So if you ever cook with olive oil and it starts to, whenever it starts to smoke and the yeah. only way you're supposed to cook, like let's say a piece of chicken, yeah. the, it's obviously gonna start smoking. Yeah. But when it does, it becomes car carcinogenic, which is poisonous basically. Wow. Yeah. So so something like great pseudo has a lot uh, has a bit of a higher smoke point. Coconut oil is great to cook with mm. along with peanut oil too. Okay. I try to stay away from peanut oil when I'm cooking for other people yeah. just because I don't know if they're allergic Allergies. to it and I yes. really just it's not it's not worth taking a chance with stuff like that. That makes so, sense. Yeah. So dropping some knowledge there. I a don't think bit. I realized that. <laughs> olive oil is olive like oil a is, staple. Like everyone yeah, uses it's like, it. I'll cook with olive oil. Yeah. I mean, it's fantastic for when you're not cooking for, for oils, as dressings or yeah. anything like that. It's amazing. But apart so, from that, I stay away from it. Got you. Make sure your EEVO is not being used at high temperatures. Yep. I didn't know it becomes a carcinogen. So thank you for that, no Zach. Wow. Why is that this online one? school is doing big I know things. it's doing me a lot of good. <laughs> So what do we have going on here? We have a little hot plate. Yes. So for those of you who have small kitchens, makeshift kitchens, you live in an apartment, whatever the case may yeah. be, you can still accomplish can still meals this. like this. Hard. This is not super hard. So we've got ourselves a non-stick pan here. Yeah. And then I'm gonna try to get this higher. There we go. Okay. Let's, I'm gonna just check the max on this. And then, so it's like 400, so I'll put it down to like, that should be good. Yeah. Okay. Right. So for I'm, those of you not using it. a hot plate, I mean, you can just it. use a stove. Usually, I mean, I would try to cook it on medium. Okay. Medium. Because one thing that people do is, is when they're afraid inside, to cook inside the kitchen is they yeah. turn things on lower, yeah. on lower temperatures because they don't want to get burnt. Right. But then the food turns out bad. If, yeah. I would cook, if I were to cook a piece of chicken on low heat, it would just boil it mm -hmm. rather than searing it. I got you. So that's why you can't you can't be afraid. You got to go and do it, basically. Yeah. yeah, you have to go and do it, and make sure you stay in the kitchen when you do it. I can't tell you how many times I've done something 
and then I leave the kitchen. And I come That's back. That's not a good idea. And I it's tried done. that. It's oh, done. trust me, I know from experience. <laughs> like my mom goes to the grocery store and leaves a pot of rice on on low temperature. Yes. And then I go shower and I come down and it's all burnt and I'm like and the pan's gone. I've only done that once. That's like one of my only kitchen disasters. He's done it once. <laughs> Everyone does live. it. it you haven't lived. To Keep living. That's all I'm saying. Keep living. It's gonna happen. Again. All right. So for the our whipped cream that I'm gonna get you to do. Okay. We're gonna add a little bit of sugar. So we have some heavy cream bit. in here. Yep. Heavy cream. Heavy cream. We're gonna turn that into whipped cream. And we're gonna turn it into whipped cream. Yes. So you've and seen he's putting some dashes of just sugar a in bit here. Of sugar. Just a little bit. And then personally, I like a little vanilla. In a little extra vanilla. Just a little. Okay. And if this dumps on me, I'm gonna cry. It won't. Okay. There we're you go. Yeah, we're good, we're so good. as you can see, Master Chefs, they don't measure. And I, I like really to don't. consider myself, I guess, a semi Master Chef, even yeah. though I know I'm not. I, mean, I don't like it, to measure either. Yeah. I, I mean, when it comes to like baking cakes, you have to measure. Do you have to? You have to. You have to. Measure as much as I hate to admit it. But for savory, I, I like never measure. Yeah. Never, ever. Unless I'm like learning something new, even then I still don't. I just kind of wing it. Cause yeah. I, I hate like just this is not me. I don't like measuring things. I know. The only time I I um, the only time I I measure things if I'm trying to write down the recipe mm -hmm. for like like a cookbook. That makes like sense. Like when I was making my, the, the cookbook, I had to like measure everything. Okay. Like I used to like wing it into. I used to just dump it into like a teaspoon and then pour it to see mm -hmm. how much I made and be like quarter teaspoon, whatever the case may be. But it was so irritating for me. I hate exactly. So I'm supposed to be whisking just, this. Just, just keep whisking. Just and whisking it. And when, and when your arm gets tired, that's that. That's when you know that it's almost ready. Maybe you got to keep whisking more than. This is a workout. So this is how you incorporate fitness. Yeah. With cooking. Well, I, I guess you could say. I'm working yeah. on my biceps right here. Do you see that? Do you see that? And I'm doing this thing right here. It's well, really not. It's really not. I don't want you to think you're gonna get fit doing this. This is heavy whipping cream. It looks good. It I'm looks sure good. it's going to taste delicious. Oh, yeah. And after that, we're going to need to go play some tennis. Yeah, to burn <laughs> on the salt. <laughs> so, EEVO at high temperatures, not a great thing. What are some of the other things that have surprised you in the kitchen about cooking? Um, knives. Knives? Yeah. So, when I started cooking, my mom has like a normal set that you could just yes. buy anywhere, right? Right, right. But then when I started using those, I'm like, and I tried chopping fast, it like, it just gets stuck and it's just dull. Mm. Oh, almost stuck away. Holy crap, see, so handles in too. Yes, so handles you're walking, in. See, if you're handles walking by, in. you don't tip it over. There's keep some, it in. There's some kitchen <laughs> etiquette that you need to learn here. This is not for the novice. Yeah, so There then, you go. Um, handles in, don't burn yourself. I convinced my mom after seeing culinary school stuff to buy me a set of knives, okay? from and I brought these really sharp Japanese knives because they're a bit lighter mm -hmm. and then that's what I would have preferred to use which I still do yeah about a weekend I ended up cutting part of my nail off from there and then I stuck a bandage on it and then before like 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 literally before I start cooking mom goes please don't cook because then I don't want to take these please don't cut yourself because I don't want to take these away from you <laughs> right? right and then I cut myself and I and I grabbed some some wrap from my bag mm. and just wrap it up and the next thing you know there's like blood there and my brother walks in I'm like is there blood on your finger i'm like oh yeah I, j I i just cut myself with a pair of scissors you told him with scissors i i swear to god i told me with scissors because i did not want her to take away the knives see that's one of the reasons yeah. i don't spend a lot of time in the kitchen there's too many, there's too many accidents things. it's dangerous in there you know what you should do you should hire a chef like zach to come and cook for you that's a good, that, you know what, that's a very good point. That's a good idea. That's a good point. I actually had a chef living with me. It was amazing. <laughs> I miss you. If you're out there listening. Whoever your name you. is. Yes, I miss you. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to add a tiny bit more and wait for this to heat up. I'm just trying to play with this temperature. Mm, no worries. How is this looking? That's looking good. It's actually, see, it's already getting thicker, right? Yeah. So you got to keep whisking, whisking, whisking. Oh, fast, I have to fast. whisk a little faster. There you go. You got to get that done. technique going. Now yep. this. <laughs> there you go. Probably need to suck in my abs as I'm doing it and engage, and that becomes a workout. <laughs> that becomes a workout of itself. All right, we're doing double duty in here. All right, so I'm just gonna soak the bread a little bit. What okay. I like to do is soak the bread. Okay. I like to just take it out and then put it on a plate to soak it. Okay. Well, there you so, go. You've got your serving plate. you actually grab plate because this Absolutely. is what I do. What? It's like my brother. I hate my my uh, the small one. Sorry. A small one. Yeah. Because when I cook, I always forget stuff, and I get my hands dirty. I'm like, and then I call my brother over, and he hates this. He's like. 
Oh, sorry. Could you just hold that for one second? Absolutely. He, hate, he like hates it when I make him go get stuff. This is like two pe two people in the kitchen yeah. type job. There we go. So I'm. I what I like to do is, and you, now you can put that down on top. Okay. So what I like to do, that, I like just here. like to let it soak just a little bit. Okay. So it like kind of absorbs a little bit more flavor. Now I don't know if that really helps or not, but it's just what I do, I guess. It's just, I don't know. That that I just. Sense. I mean, it's worked, so I mean, I mean, might as well keep doing it. Towel, paper towel. Yep. There you go. Okay. Oh well, I and think we have. Uh, that's from the water. Is that yeah. what it is? Yep. Water, and oil, is butter. Do you cause... test your pan with water, or you just um, kind of move the, the no, oil kinda, around to see? I kind of just. It's not very hot. I mean, it's, I, it's, it's it, it should be good. Gotcha. It should be good. I kind of after a while, you just kind of you just kind of get the, the sense for things. I guess I don't know. Gotcha. And then, so, what are yeah. some of your go-to's in the kitchen while we get this stuff prepared? Yeah. Share a little bit of um, that I'm, with our audience. Matter of fact, let's hold that. We don't want them to get all the tidbits here. Yeah, all let's the take a quick break. Yes. We are in the kitchen cooking with Chef Zach, and we are going to be right back. I hope you picked up some tidbits. We've dropped some recipes in here. You've seen us incorporating cooking and fitness. When we come back, we'll be dining on some French toast and seeing what else Zach is up to. Parkway Mazda is where customer satisfaction is just not a slogan, it's our culture. I love coming here. It's like coming home. I feel like these people are my family. Which is very appropriate because that's how it is around here. It feels like family. Okay, uh, I came to Parkway because my car was flooded in Hurricane Harvey and they picked out a car, or we picked out a car and it was in the right price, it was real easy. They pulled it around the front, I bought it, it was easy, they made me feel just like family. Once a customer, you become family. The people here at Parkway Family Mazda really do make you feel like family. Every experience has been a pleasant one. From the purchase, to the repair, to the finance. Come on and join the family at Parkway Family Mazda. At Parkway, we are deeply concerned for all who are affected by the recent flood. For a very limited time, take advantage of five months, no payments, on new 2017 Mazdas. $1,000 rebate and $750 flood assistance and 0% ARP financing for 60 months. Okay, so welcome back to the Simply Central Show. We are here with Chef Zach Cara and we are making French toast. Yep. So before the break, I was whipping up this wonderful whipping cream and as you can see, with all whipped up <laughs> right with Zach's muscle it's all whipped up it's so muscle. <laughs> right right so this is going to be used to go on top of our French toast yeah not healthy and then we pop the French toast yep we're gonna pop it so these so these are actually done they're just cooked with a little bit of oil nice and golden on each side yeah and then I'll put this on a mm. plate and then now if you put the whipped cream directly on it it'll actually melt so what i like yeah. to do is now you can just let it cool let it sit out for about five ten minutes five ten minutes but i just like to put it inside the fridge or the freezer okay to speed up the process for a couple minutes that's a nice trick yeah so i never thought about doing that i always just put it on there and it melts like butter and then it's like eh. it's it doesn't good. have that pretty look it, yeah it doesn't have that nice little pretty look that i like so yeah. i mean i'm kind of particular when it comes to the kitchen so I mean, I, I like to I like to make things perfect. I'm a bit of a perfectionist, I guess. Perfectionist. Okay. So then after we do that, yeah. now we've got it in the fridge, mm -hmm. and we just have to add the little trimmings, some strawberries. Yeah. We got some strawberries. We got some whipped cream, just a little bit of powdered sugar, and yes. that's it. So let's sit down and eat because we have some prepared. Okay. So here we have our sinfully delicious. <sighs> French toast. French toast. We have worked so hard on this. I feel like after this, I might need a nap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you can see it's all plated up. Yeah. Nice, Zach. Thank all you. Nicely. Thank no you. Worries. And don't forget my muscle went into that heavy whipping all cream. All into the whipping cream. It's, it's all in the whipping cream. So it's all there. <laughs> I like a little bit of syrup on mine. Really? So yeah, I do. So. I don't like maple syrup, honestly. No? I only like like the gross like processed maple syrup. Oh. That just tastes like straight sugar. Oh my god. I'm I, gonna I, do I, this. Oh, oh that's oh. a lot. That, that's a lot. No judgment. No judgment. You know what? Just, I, I, I mean, you know what? I will not judge. I put a lot of syrup on my pancakes. You know too. what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna turn this around because what I want to do is I want to just taste this just by itself. All right. Yeah, let's mmm. Let's taste it with just some whipping cream and a little strawberry and I'm everything. I'm gonna get everything. 
Yeah, a little bit of everything. No syrup though. No I just syrup, want though? no syrup yet because I want to make yet. sure that I taste this just like All you right. made it. All right. Mmm. Mm. Mm. Really good. That's pretty tasty. Yeah. Wow. I haven't had this in a while. <laughs> so how much does it cost to have you come cook at my house? <laughs> I'm saying. Now I'm gonna get some syrup in there. So we did a lot in the kitchen today. So mm -hmm. You were talking about, you know, some of the different things to be mindful of, mm -hmm. the different types of oils yep. and the heat levels. You gave us some recipes. Yeah. You know, we definitely appreciate that. And mm -hmm. then we were talking about some substitutions. I mean, this is this is some pretty heavy yeah. food. It's delicious. You're not going to be able to eat this all the time. For so sure. you have some substitutions that you can use to make yeah. it just a little bit mm -hmm. more healthy. You know, you can use the honey. You can use honey or coconut sugar. Or coconut strawberries sugar. are always a good thing. I yeah. Mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Perfect. I actually think it tastes better with strawberries. Mm. So It does. For sure. I mean, it's fruit. <laughs> you can't go fruit wrong with fruit. You can't go wrong with fruit. <laughs> right. And then uh, maybe you could use a different loaf of bread if you really want to. But I think it tastes the best with like some sort of like very plain bread. Mm. And this is white bread, mm -hmm. so that may not be a preference. You can use wheat bread just in case you want to, so mm -hmm. just know that. That's pretty cool. And so here, we're eating us some French toast. I don't know. I probably need to get a workout in. <laughs> Let's not forget about the activity. We did say that this is about a healthy cooking. Yep. So normally you cook healthy. These are some guilty pleasures. And this is all wonderful and fine. You had the opportunity to do this yeah. on MasterChef Junior. Not the French toast. Not the French toast. The Just French the toast. cooking. Just the cooking part. The closest thing I made to this was I made a six. Well, before mm. I didn't get to do this, but ironically, before going on MasterChef, I kind of did like a culinary boot camp because I never really liked to bake. You have culinary boot camps? Ba no, I did it myself. Oh, okay. <laughs> With my mom. <laughs> okay. So like, um, I I made like the six layer almond tour cake. And it was so good. And then, mm. and then when I was on the show, I'm I, I made it once, but it wasn't like six layers, obviously. But it was still good. And then I remember it was with the meringue. With two minutes left, my my, my meringue do doesn't work. Mm. So with two minutes, I have to separate and whip a meringue and pipe it. And then I sum up. That was the that was the most rushed and closest I've ever been to not to not finishing inside a kitchen. Wow. It was insane. Because you had to hand whip it. I know. I have to like separate the, the egg whites and put it into a mixer. Wow. Even though yes. you're still putting it into a mixer, it takes like five minutes to whip. Oh wow! So For I, that. I just jacked, the, just put it on like full speed, and I and then I had to put it into a piping bag and pipe it and like assemble it in like two minutes. Wow! That was like that was probably the most horrifying thing I've had. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that was that's the most horrifying thing that's happened to me by far. Make sure you use a mixer. Make just you, use a mixer. Yeah, it makes you, your life easier. Please, I th I or got muscles off of that. Yeah, just <laughs> buy yourself some some technology. Yeah. That's important. There's nothing that uh, that you're going to gain from doing a little extra sure. uh, legwork. Yeah, your, your muscles aren't going to get any bigger. Just get a mixer. So we did it the long way today. It was a nice experience. It was. Don't make it hard on yourselves. So let's talk about some mm. of the upcoming projects you have. Because like we said earlier, I mean, you are a chef. You're doing acting. You are playing tennis. So what are some of the upcoming things you have going on in those areas? Uh, well, well, recently I just competed at the World well, Qualifier for the World Food Championships. Mm. So that was really cool. And then I ended up getting a documentary filmed about myself. I got approached by um, a really cool filmmaker and then we kind of just made it. It was really cool. So when is your documentary coming out? Um, it should be coming out sometime 2018. I don't know the exact dates, okay. but it um, should be coming out around then. Okay, check out Zach. Yeah. He has a documentary. You want to get to know what he's doing. And are you just going to be cooking there? Or is it going to be tennis? I mean, what's going to be in there? Um, well, it's pretty much just the process of me creating a brand new recipe, two mm. brand new so recipes. And um, honestly, that was probably the hardest I've had. I think I made this one dish about 20, 30 times. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was just... That's too many times. And then I was, like, staying up, like, really late, and then I ended up figuring out what to do. So it's kind of just, like, a journey, me cr creating the recipes, I struggling, and then going through the competition day, and it's, it's, it's really interesting, actually. Wow. So I think you said something really interesting there. As we talk here on the Simply Central Show, we're always talking about the journey. Mm -hmm. We're talking about how you build a better you, and here you've done a recipe 20, 30 times. Yeah. I'll do a recipe one time, it doesn't work out. I think it's the <laughs> recipe, it's not me, right? Yeah. So, 
you have to keep at it. You like, just gotta keep going. You have to keep going. Yeah. Especially, I mean, if, if, if something doesn't work, you just gotta keep trying again. Because for me, what um, I'm all about, like plating, especially. So mm, making it what look I, good. Because like what I didn't realize was because I had a lot of big elements. Yeah. So I, I didn't realize that it wasn't the type of food. It was how I was cutting them, or like mm. how, that's how it was. Because they were way too big. So if I just cut everything into small pieces, then I could plate it better. Oh. So just maybe it's just for me it's just little stuff like that yeah little things maybe like if you don't like cook your chicken on high heat or like yeah. low heat yeah or, or the whatever. knives that you use yeah or the knives oh. you use are like are like very dull and like the honer like you know like the honer it's like the little sharpening stick mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that actually doesn't sharpen your knives yeah it just keeps them sharp so if your knife's dull and you want to make it sharper that's not the way to go there you go it's just it's just like little stuff like this that you just learn along the way i guess I didn't know what a honer was. I'm just saying <laughs> for sharpening knives, and I didn't know that it doesn't really do what you think it's supposed to yeah, do, right? Yeah, it's supposed right? to sharpen your knife, but only keeps it sharp. Basically. There's an education yep. to this stuff. There's so. a, there's a, a, a little bit of a boring sense, but yeah, yeah. it makes you better it because does. you know the little things. So here you wanna, it's almost like sharpening your sword, right? Almost, like, it's, it's it's metaphorical is. because you you're yeah, you're saying you're sharpening your yeah. sword by learning. Yeah. And then you also learn how to sharpen your tools, yeah. so the things that you use, how to make them mm -hmm. work better for you. For sure. So, no, that's pretty amazing. So you've got the documentary coming yeah. up. Mm -hmm. And anything going on with tennis? Um, nothing so far in tennis. Um, just keep going at it. Tennis is one of those things where um, you just got to keep going at it. Yeah. It's just, there's really nothing to it. It's just a lot of training. Keep working hard and yeah. keep going at it. And yeah. just try to... I'm getting back into tournaments now, so I okay. was kind of hurt before. So I'm starting to get back into it and playing a lot more tennis, which I'm happy about. So. Absolutely. And back to burning all those thousands yeah. of calories a day, right? <laughs> yeah. So, I might need to take up tennis. That's all. It's I'm fun. Saying. It's really fun. Yeah, I've played it before, just not at yeah. a professional level. <laughs> so now, what are your goals? Because, you know, a lot of people yeah. talk about these are the things that I'm doing. Really, what do you want them to lead to? Yeah. You know, you have your whole life in front of you. So you have you had any thoughts about that, what you truly want to accomplish? Uh, well, when I grow up, I want to become first a tennis player. <laughs> it I sounds really weird, but I want to become a tennis player. And then while I'm doing that, um, I still want to do, like, acting yeah. and Making it, my next goal is to hopefully do a, a new cookbook soon. Yeah, another one. A new cookbook, but longer this time. Yeah, a lot longer because this one only had six recipes, but it came with six like YouTube videos showing you how to make them. Only so six this recipes. Time, yeah, I probably only would six. have one or two. <laughs> <laughs> Spaghetti might be one, and I might do like. I have a really good pasta like, recipe in there. Really, it's delicious. Okay, yeah. awesome. Well, tell everyone where they can find yeah. you, Zach. Uh, so you guys can find me pretty much on any social media, um, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, yeah. YouTube. It's just my name, Zach Cara. And then for social media, it's just Zach Cara too. Yeah. If, I mean, if you just Google my name, everything should come up. He said Google him. Google. Google, <laughs> Google him. So we have had an amazing day. We've talked about mm -hmm. health and fitness. You, at the age of 15, giving a number of people out there encouragement, Guys, you can start at any age. For sure. Anytime. Yeah. You can start wherever you are. I mean, you didn't even like cooking, and then you <laughs> just started looking into it. So, yeah. And it wasn't even a passion of yours. I think that that's important for folks to know. You don't have to have a passion for the things yeah. that maybe you're just interested in. I and mean, you become creative for with sure. those things, look into them, and you never know where it can go. And because we're so creative... Yeah. We might try something, we might do really well at it, and then we might say, you know what, I'm interested in trying something else. Yeah, maybe if you don't like it, but like, I always I always reference this one quote from a Serena Williams book when she was talking about um, going for a shot in tennis. It's like, uh -huh. if I didn't go for this one shot, I would never know if I made it or miss it. It's like, if you try something, you, like you, you never know if you're gonna, if you're gonna like it or if you don't. I like that. All right, Serena Williams. <laughs> we appreciate you impressing upon Zach. I think that we have had a great show. Thank you so for much sure. for coming with us. My Thank pleasure. you for cooking for us. I'm and glad you it. <laughs> we ask that you like, share, follow at Simply Central. And don't forget Zach Cara on all of social media. Keep in touch. Stay engaged. We have lots coming up for you. We will see you next time.